We're now going to show you how to use the Radiocraft CC tool for, uh, for configuration of a tiny mesh module. When using the CC tool, we can either use the CC tool for direct configuration of the individual module, or we can use the CC tool as a terminal emulator to send commands to a remote module inside of a network. Now for this first introduction, let us do the basic configuration of the module using the CC tool on a one-to-one -one basis. To make this work, the first thing is to introduce the communication and the connection between the CC tool and the module is based on the USB cable. The USB is now plugged into the Radiocraft's demo board and is providing power to the module. The other side of the USB cable is connected to my serial port on my computer. And in this case, the serial port is COM105, as may be seen from this screenshot up here. So here we need to enter the communication port that we're using for the communication. And then the default communication baud rate is 19,200 bits per second. So after we've established the physical connection between the board and the computer and selected the right communication port, we can click the communication connect button and communication has been established between the board and the tiny mesh module and the computer. So as after establishing the physical connection between the computer and the module, next step is to set the module in config mode. Before setting the module in config mode, let us enable the tool to wait for the config mode status by clicking this enter configuration mode button. The tool is now waiting for the module to enter config status. So next step is to click the config button on the board. As we click the button, the tool is receiving the configuration prompt, as may be seen up in this part of the window. Here is the prompt that has now been received by the tool. And we may see if we take a closer look down again at the module. that the module is now in configuration mode indicating by indicated by both the red and the yellow indicator lighting up at the same time. So the module is now ready for configuration and the first thing we want to do is to read back the configuration module memory from the module to the tool by clicking the left hand arrow. As we click the arrow we receive this data packet from the module being a mirror image of the configuration memory of the module and in this window we get a dialog highlighting each and every configurable parameter of the module and as we hover over the different areas of the configuration window we would see a short help text indicating what can be done with, with each of the different settings. So as we scroll down through the different settings we will see that we can change parameters like the RF channel, we can set the output power of the device, we can set the configuration date, we can configure the uh, data rate, the communication data rate between the devices, we can change the protocol mode from transparent to packet mode and vice versa and there's a bunch of different alternatives that we can manipulate 
but what is most interesting for us at the moment is to find the parameters that di dictate whether the devices will actually be able to create the network. So let's scroll down to the addressing capabilities of the device. As we scroll down we will see that we can set the unique identity of the device. Now the unique identity is the parameter that needs to be individual for every single device within a network. So a network cannot function if there are multiple devices with identical IDs. So we need to make sure that every device has a unique ID. And fortunately, out of factory, every tiny mesh module is shipped with a unique UID uh, already. So inside of a given network, every device needs to have similar system IDs. It is the system ID that indicates whether this is a device that belongs to the network or not. So for a network to be formed, we need to have devices that all have unique UIDs and all have similar system IDs. So in this case, we have a gateway device that has system ID number 1000 and we have set the unique ID to be 1000. So let's now configure this device as being a gateway device which can be do done through this pull down window here. We can now select that it is a gateway device and we press the go button. This device is now configured as being a gateway. We have already selected the address. And now let us set the other parameters that might be of interest for this demo. First of all, let's make sure that we have the similar RF channel selected for all the devices that we want to connect. So this is in this case, it's number seven. We want to make sure that we have the same data rate on every device. It's 5, which is the default value. And we are going to create a uh, network now operating in packet in, in protocol mode 1, which means it is going to be a transparent communication protocol that we're going to implement. So now that everything has been selected, we can press the right hand arrow and all the selections we made will be transferred to the, uh, to the module memory. Now since we made no changes this, this time, we will also get an error message when we do this transfer. It was, it's going to tell us that we didn't make any changes, but that's okay, we knew that. So after finishing configuration of the module, we exit the configuration mode by pressing this enter terminal mode button and as we enter terminal mode we can see now on the module that it exited from configuration mode the LEDs have now started flashing in normal mode and says, since this being a gateway the red LED is indicating every time the gateway is transmitting and the yellow LED is indicating every time the gateway is receiving. Mm -hmm.